Hello, hello. Another week, another episode. To debate.net, your podcast of debates. 12 minutes of Sebastian claims that this is my favorite word, juicy debates. It's 12, it's 12 minutes of fun. It's 12 minutes that will change your life. 12 minutes that will challenge the way you think, hopefully. <laughs> yes. Or at least it's entertaining, we hope. Um, for well, in any, It's entertaining. And hopefully, um, considering that And hopefully, considering there's nothing really interesting on the internet out there anymore, it's good that you have our podcast to listen to because, you know, as you know, MySpace is dead, uh, Internet Explorer is dead, although that was not really content. I'm going to just remove this. AOL is dead. AOL is dead. Uh, Yahoo is kind of half dead, probably like a zombie. Facebook is dead. Oh, oh. is it? Uh, I don't know, maybe that's a motion to debate. You did it again, the master of transitions. Incredible. <laughs> right, the motion today is Facebook is dead. Yes or no, for or against. Has the flip of the coin decided that Facebook is dead or has the flip of the coin decided <laughs> that... Uh... <laughs> we, we just decided of, of Facebook's fate by flipping the coin. <laughs> Here you go, Facebook. The flip of the coin will decide what happens to you. All right. So the flip of the coin decided that you will argue for the motion that Facebook is indeed dead and I will be against that. And you're going first. That's correct. So let's get started. Let's do this. Ta -ta -na, let's do this. Okay, let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues for the motion. Facebook as a platform has become uninteresting, boring, irrelevant. It's all about fake news, filter bubbles, and stupid viral videos. And yes, it's another perfect transition to one of our previous debates about whether fake news and filter bubbles exist. Facebook is so boring. It's people enjoying their coffee. It's people expressing their political support. Um, it's the, the celebration of the anniversary of their wedding or their spouse or their friends or their dog. Uh, it's them working out. And in general, people really don't create meaningful content if they create any content at all. And this is not me saying it. 90% of the people on Facebook just consume stuff. Uh, for those creators, You know, out there, is Facebook really the platform where you want to create stuff? It's really more, in my opinion, a distribution promotion channel, which people are getting really bored about. And people are getting more conscious of how they spend their time. They realize they're really wasting their time on Facebook and they, be they become unhappy with it. So they're turning away from Facebook. Look at where young people are spending their time outdoors, skateboarding on scooters, but also on Snapchat. Or I read about this thing recently, music lip dubbing, this application called TikTok. I don't know if you heard about this, but they're not spending time on Facebook. Remember MySpace? I mentioned MySpace uh, earlier on. It's, it was so ugly. And Facebook, when it started, looked very clean alongside MySpace. And now, how does Facebook look? It's, it's all full of ads. I don't know where to click. I still have an account, but I don't really use it. Instagram, which Facebook owns, is still relatively clean. But it's interesting to note that the founders of Instagram... Recently, there's Facebook because of disagreements. I wonder, I wonder why. Perhaps it's not complete. Perhaps Facebook is not completely dead by numbers just yet today, but it's dead in its DNA. There's just too many scandals. You've heard about them this year. Privacy aspects, misuse of data, leaks. And even if you look at numbers, how much money does Facebook make from advertisers who want to spread false information? Do you really think Facebook is still going to be alive? in a few years' time, if it's not already completely half dead by now. So I'm in favor of that motion. Facebook is dead. I'm sorry. Rest in peace. Now it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument. So sharing your birthday wishes, what you do on vacation and what you eat and what you enjoy, what movies you, uh, you watch is boring and nothing original. Welcome to life, Sebastian. This is what normal people do, no matter if it's on Facebook or anywhere else. So let's check the premise really quick. Is Facebook dead? Of course not. I bet that most of the listeners check it every single day. And even those who, like me, have no Facebook account may have Instagram or use WhatsApp and are Facebook users through those. 
So if you take the motion literally, it's actually decided right here. And I clearly won because Facebook is the number one social media game in our part of the world with over 1 billion active users. No, it's very much not that. Will Facebook be dead and go out of business within the next decade or so? I tell you it won't. No matter what we think of Facebook, it is by now too large to fail. And for better or worse, we'll be dealing with it for the years to come. Because yes, there is a need people feel to connect with each other, share what movie they went to and where the vacation was and congratulate each other on birthdays and what have you. That won't go away. And all the examples you mentioned, by the way, are still around. MySpace is still not dead. Might be called a zombie, but it's still around. So is Yahoo. So I have to say, by those standards, it's probably never going to be dead. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. It's funny to debate this because we both work in Google. And even for Google's interest in terms of whether Google or tech companies will survive over the next few decades, it's interesting to wonder what will happen. I'm not optimistic for Facebook. Indeed, when I asked in my previous segment, do you really think Facebook will be alive in the, in the next few years or decades to come? I, I don't think so. I don't know if Google will be alive. I'm proud of what we do. But uh, I have to be honest, when you look back in history, most of the companies that exist today did not exist a century ago. And the, and the companies, the big companies that existed a century ago or 50 years ago, most of them have disappeared. And uh, we can have another debate about this. You mentioned it's life. Grow up, Sebastian. This is why people are sharing their stuff. But my point is they share stuff. People share their things on whatever is the trendy platform of the moment. And I think, unfortunately for Facebook, Facebook has lost that appeal. And you talk about Instagram and WhatsApp being owned by Facebook. That's true. Here's the thing. Even the founders of WhatsApp, I mentioned the founders of Instagram had left just recently. The founder, the co-founder of WhatsApp has also left Facebook also for disagreeing with Facebook, Facebook strategy. Now, he did not go into the details, but he believes it was a mistake. So if uh, these popular platforms, even their founders have left their mother entity now, which has bought them, I think it sends a negative signal as to the direction that the platform is taking. And the reason for that is because Facebook is a public company, has to satisfy shareholders. And unfortunately, and we'll have the results probably next week, I believe, for the third quarter results for Facebook. Unfortunately, the numbers of users in developed markets in rich countries is flat or even declining slightly. So this is very worrying. And of course, there's still the emerging markets, which are still growing because people are getting, getting online and they hear about Facebook. But my bet is that We've had this inflection point already at the beginning of this year with the Cambridge Analytica scandal and the subsequent problems that Facebook has had. In addition of this, because the platform, and honestly, you log on to Facebook, I don't find this appealing at all. It's just all over the place. Notifications you have to disable all the time. Friend requests from random people you don't know. I have to say, I thought Instagram was better. It's still a very vibrant as a platform. Yeah, I agree. But I tried it and I tried it for various purposes on a personal and also on a side business level. And I have to say, I'm very disappointed. There's this mechanism and I'm sure you listeners will relate to what I say. You go on Instagram and you follow people because it's, I follow you, please follow me back rule. And then a few, few days, a few weeks later, you just unfollow the people because you don't care about them. It's this constant habit of trying to get people to look at what you're doing, except nobody cares and people press on like or the heart on Instagram, but they actually don't notice anything. And I have a few reasons to say this is because they don't read the comments next to it. You could put any kind of stuff. I put, I opened an Instagram account with putting just pretty faces of women. It was part of a test. And indeed, people don't care about anything that this person may be saying next to the Instagram post. So it's all just a game that I think people are getting tied more and more of. And therefore, I don't think that there is any chance for Facebook to come back from the dead. And now on to Dirk. So let's see. Your arguments. Oh, the founders of WhatsApp and Instagram left the company. Oh, bad. Maybe that's exactly the opposite. Maybe that's just really an important signal and the right thing. Because the founders of WhatsApp and Instagram guess what, are not the founders of Facebook. So yeah, they may disagree with the strategy of Mark Zuckerberg, but that's not to say that Mark Zuckerberg's strategy is wrong or doomed to fail. 
Second, right now, the world's largest text service, WhatsApp, the world's largest messenger, seem to be Facebook Messenger. The world's most important photo sharing service, by far, Instagram. And those are the examples we know. What maybe not everybody knows is that Facebook already turns into a financial service company and has a bank license in many, many countries that are about to be the next billion users, as we like to call them. And uh, in Nigeria, for instance, Facebook's game is much less about having that fancy web page where you can share your last vacation pictures, but about micropayments, about supporting founders, about business cases that we have no clue about here in the West. So Facebook is forward thinking in that. And we know a number of examples of companies that are not as active in those emerging markets as Facebook. So Facebook is even having a future-oriented strategy by trying to be there first. And that will maybe even extend beyond the next decades what Facebook is today. Facebook is evolving. I agree, the page is old and ugly, but so is Reddit's front page. No one stops people from flowing into Reddit, though. So is Wikipedia. It's not necessarily the look and feel of the page. It's the service it's providing. And there are plenty of other uh, sites trying to provide the same service, just lacking that network. And it's like email. You can hate it or love it, and there are plenty of alternatives, and still it's around because it was the first one solving for a really critical problem, and it sticks around for that very purpose. So it's not easy to be disregarded. In the end, a company that has 1 billion users and has that kind of portfolio, I have a really hard time imagining that company going out of business, and that's really the only way how it could be that. If it goes bankrupt and out of business, then it might be gone. And that's not going to happen in the next decade or two decades even. And I refuse to look beyond that horizon because really nobody knows. We might all be on Mars by then. Final statements. Sebastian goes first. No, unlike email, email is here to stay because you don't. You can read email with whatever client you want. Uh, you have this protocol which exists, uh, whichever uh, platform or client you're using, which is not the same between Facebook, for instance, or WhatsApp or Instagram or other services are out there. They don't communicate with, with one another. You can't be on WeChat or, or, and, and communicate with someone on Facebook Messenger at the same time. So it's not like email. I disagree. You say Zuckerberg is the founder of Facebook and maybe he's managed to create something successful. But here's my point. He's clinging to his CEO job ever since he founded the company. Really, he knows everything. Really, he knows how to grow a company. Now, he's maybe managed to do this all this time. And great. I mean, he is uh, amazing from that standpoint, I have to admit. But if he wants to go down with the ship, yeah, that's the way to go, Captain. Go ahead. Just cling to the ship. Right? Don't let others try to take over, maybe as a CEO, and try to reshift maybe the direction that Facebook is taking. If it's not dead by numbers, as I said, it's dead, I think, in its DNA because of rep reputation issues, because people get bored. L listeners, please, like when you go to Facebook, are you not bored half of the time? And look at where the younger generation, people who are going to be around for the next few years and decades, they're flocking to the next new thing. Today, it's Snapchat, it's TikTok, it's I don't care what it is. But it's these new applications which are going to surpass just the, the fad of the decade, which was Facebook up to this year. I think we're at this turning point. So yes, Facebook is dead, is a living dead at the, at the moment. But unfortunately, we'll talk about this maybe in a few years uh, to see whether you or I was correct through the flip of this coin. Obviously, we had to defend our sides. But uh, I do think that Facebook is indeed dead already. <laughs> Derek. Facebook sits on a massive amount of money and is worth more than some countries have as GDP. $140 billion. Even if Facebook manages to cut its value year over year by just sitting on their hands in half, it takes eight years from now to go bankrupt. Eight years from now, if they cut half the value year over year, which is, as you know, a massive amount of money, 70 billion next year, 35 billion the year after that, and uh, do the math. 
No, it's not that by any means. And the reason why it's not that is not actually only that number that I just gave you or the billion users. The reason it's not that is because it invests in the right growth fields in the right regions of this planet. So investing in Nigeria, investing in Jakarta, investing in parts of Southeast Asia, those are the places that have the exponential growth that will secure Facebook's future. So no, it's not that. It's here to stay and we have to live with it whether we like it or not. So, what do you really think, Sebastian? Um, well, I was wrong in 2012 when I thought Facebook was dead. <laughs> <laughs> 2012, I remember very vividly, I was in Nigeria for the first time, I believe. And uh, Facebook's share price had dipped from $30 to $19. And I thought, okay, that's, that's, I, like, it confirms what I was thinking. I don't believe in Facebook. It's just boring and six years on it's still around so i was wrong and um, i admit it but now maybe things have changed i don't know i i do think things i do think that facebook will as in itself the another company but at least the platform will not exist in 50 in the 50 years time now i know it's very very i'm not taking huge risks in saying 50 years but i do think that that indeed the facebook platform as it exists today is just is not set up for success for the long run. And my point about Instagram and WhatsApp, um, I'm, I have slightly more doubts about this, uh, whether it's going to continue existing, but I still I still do think that people are going to flop the next new thing. Um, so unless Instagram and WhatsApp reinvent themselves, they're not going to stay. I do see Facebook as two far apart. One part is that massive user database and analysis network they created that they basically right now use to sell ads through. But uh, it's basically a, a huge database of knowledge about many, many things uh, that are about us, our lives and our personalities. And that will continue to stay. Now, we can argue over Facebook, the web page, and I do really look forward to the day they kill that. Because if you think of it, Instagram is really nothing else but a different view on the same kind of data that we drop into Facebook today. It's just pictures and text, but with more emphasis on the pictures. And in Facebook, it's the other way around, but it's in essence the same kind of data set, uh, just visualized differently. And I do believe these kind of things will stay around. Now, here's here are two major risks for Facebook. Risk number one, and that's why email is still around. Decentralized systems are superior to centralized systems. Like Mastodon. Or the whole Fediverse. Uh, Fediverse is basically the term for all these interconnected distributed networks that are doing social network, but not in the hands of one company, but you, everybody can have their own server. Very much like email basically works. If we as a society develop a taste for getting back control over our cloud data, over our social networks, over what have you, and basically install little servers of our own in our homes uh, all of a sudden, that would kill companies like Facebook really, really quick. Yeah, maybe maybe Facebook can actually invent that model. Or not invent that model, but use take advantage of that model and find a way to monetize it based on their experience in building social networks. And I do think a, a driver of this would be the kind of scandals we see. If at some point society basically decides we had enough of this data protection scandals, we are have we want our privacy and data control back, then this this could just spark that movement. That's and a then, good point. Then actually, what you make me think is that we could. It, it is actually not impossible to come to to a point at which states regulate and say. It is not allowed for a private sector company to own any user data. If you yep. want to use user data, it has to be... And I think uh, Tim Berners-Lee has created a company, if I'm not mis mistaken, uh, to have like this kind of vault system where you, you... I can't remember the name of the company, where you have user, your personal data, mm -hmm. which can be then accessed by other companies. Yeah. yeah have, you, have you read about this? I, I read, read about this. this. I don't know the name, but uh, yeah, I, I read about this. Tim Berners-Lee, in general, tries to to get the decentralized web back. That was a pretty cool debate, I have to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty uh, interesting. And I think we, we managed to stay away from being uh, too aggressive either way in terms of making 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 Facebook look like, oh, it's a wonderful platform or saying it's utter shit. 
right? Like it's it's just there's a shift. This is what we're talking about, and you're highlighting that you know Facebook is still very strong. And in our in our discussion now, you're showing how if it manages to overcome some challenges, it will it will be here to stay. And and my sh my shift is that it's it's is going the the negative way. But we're not saying that it's a you know, it's either a wonderful company or such a bad thing either. But I think that I think it was good for the debate, especially since we work at Google. I mean, we are closing down our social network ourselves, and that's an interesting aspect. That's another point. As I mentioned, MySpace is still around because there is enough value in there that people keep passing it on, and it's you can still um, access it and use it. But uh, I, I do think there are two two ways how Facebook could die. One is through total incompetence over the course of many many years. And you might make a case that you believe that's the case. And I, I say, I don't see that. Right now, the business decisions they are making seem sound to me, but uh, you made the contrary point. And the other aspect, how they could die is by, by just um, producing so much uh, pressure on regulation that at some point uh, they get basically forced out of business by society and the governments. And this is another question will that happen and i don't believe that m will happen because it takes too much coordination but uh, you might as well make the case that this is likely and you made that earlier when you said look at uh, mm -hmm. at all the scandals they had so i do think it's kind of there it's not it's not because the service is bad or because uh, we don't need social networks anyway although i would say facebook did over the long run more damage than good for us but it clearly serves a demand out there all right, let us know what you think. Uh, do you think Facebook is dead or is going to die? Do you use Facebook still? I'm still on Facebook. Dirk is not anymore. Uh, what do you think? Let us know. Don't hesitate to vote also. Go to todebate.eu. But once I say .eu, because you prefer the European, yeah, woohoo, we're Germans and French. Um, <laughs> so go and vote on todebate.eu. Uh, whether you are convinced by my arguments or Dirk's arguments, whether Facebook is dead or not. Thanks again for listening. Thank you. And Thank you, Sebastian. Bye-bye.